today's video, I'm going to introduce our special guests. We have Max the Moluccan. We have Chico the Grey, who's on top of his cage right now. And in the other half of your screen, we have Joanna Berger, who's an animal behavioralist. Can you tell us a bit about yourself, Joanna? Yeah, um, I did my master's in applied animal behavior and animal welfare science at the University of Edinburgh in their veterinary school, which is nicknamed Dick Vet. And um, <laughs> my master's thesis project was on African gray parrot behavior and welfare um, and focused on African gray social behavior and enrichment and foraging. Um, and I also... Before doing my master's degree, I worked as an exotics um, veterinary nurse and got to see lots of uh, parrots at the exotics vet where I worked. Um, and now I've started my own business doing animal behavior consultations, um, mainly focusing on parrot uh, behavior in the home. And I do a lot of those consultations over Skype so I can reach people in different countries and all over the place. So. Super uh, cool. And I'm here. <laughs> I'm here with my um, newly rescued beagle. Um, this is Acorn. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Acorn. So. <laughs> yeah. So today we're going to be talking about uh, parrot enrichment, and you can probably notice that Chico's getting a little bit antsy, and I will show you why. What I've got in my hand, I'm about to toss in the bottom of his cage. It's going to give that a little bit of a quick roll, and Chico is mm -hmm. going for his favorite treat in the world which is an acorn squash. Oops, sorry, Tico. He's just a little nervous about everything that's going on right now, but he will be down there very shortly. Yeah. <laughs> so, Tico. yeah, I, I think that squash right now are Tico's favorite toys. He's not going to take long to get into this one. As I said, it's not going to take long. There you go. So what do you think about things like uh, squash for birds, Joanna? I think it's wonderful and especially good to feed whole raw squash like you do for Tico. Um, and Tico was the champion of my October enrichment contest on Twitter, which was pumpkins for parrots um, because he was so good at demolishing large raw pumpkins as well. Um, but yeah, acorn squash is very healthy, very nutritious. Um, but the good thing about the big raw whole squash is that you can see it really provides a lot of beak exercise, um, a lot of nice physical exercise, and a lot of mental stimulation as he solves the problem of how to get in there to get the food out. And um, all of that is really important natural behavior for parrots, and that's how they would eat in the wild. So it's nice to be able to um, have that in captivity as well. Yeah, Chico, it actually really surprised me. I've given Max and Tico a few slices of squash uh, earlier in the year, and I had the brilliant idea that I'd give Max Malukin a pumpkin. Well, he had other ideas about what to do with a pumpkin, not quite understanding it was food, thinking it might be a mate. So instead, mm -hmm. I gave the pumpkin to Tico, and I thought Tico would just be afraid of it, wouldn't know what to do. And to my absolute surprise, Tico destroyed the pumpkin, went through four mm -hmm. large pumpkins, and this is wow. a 22-year-old African Grey who I don't think had ever seen a pumpkin before in his life. Wow. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. yeah. But he had had squash and acorn squash before. Is that a few slices right? of them, yes. I actually didn't realize that parrots could eat squash until another uh, friend on Instagram was talking about feeding their parrots squash. I thought, this is a great idea. Why have I never yeah. seen this to them before? <laughs> Um, and it's great right now. It's in season, and um, it's not too expensive usually. And um, I am doing, and Tico's been participating in my November enrichment contest on Twitter, which is uh, squash for parrots, like the pumpkins for parrots, um, <laughs> to try to spread the word that parrots can eat squash and that it is really good for them and it also provides them with a lot of good entertainment as well. So, you're, and anyone who's list, like watching this, um, should join in, give your parrot some squash, see what happens, and use the hashtag squash for parrots um, on Instagram or Twitter, and you can join in my contest. Um, 
great. Yeah. I've actually, it, it's fun reading some of the feedback that people have about squash. They're not sure how to introduce it to their birds. Mm -hmm. They're worried that they have small birds or how to give it to their birds. Mm -hmm. They're wondering, you know, can a budgie or a cockatiel eat squash? Mm -hmm. um, I'm saying absolutely, but it, it's, I think yeah. it's always kind of daunting giving a bird something that's almost as large as he is. Mm -hmm. um, I love the photos and I shared one of them with you on Twitter um, that Parrot of the Day shares, which is pictures of wild parrots. And they're often eating mangoes that are bigger than they are. Um, and so, you know, they do eat large um, fruit in the wild and large um, nuts. Um, and yeah, sometimes even larger than they are, which, but it is amazing to see. Um, a lot of the time we have fear issues come up for pet birds who haven't grown up in a wild setting and haven't been exposed to as many um, large fruits and vegetables. Um, so that's where you may want to take some time introducing something that's brand new um, so that you're not frightening your bird. And um, especially if your bird was in an abusive situation or um, just really didn't have lots of new experiences early in life, they might be extra anxious. Um, and I did do a YouTube video about how to gradually introduce your bird to um, a squash or a pumpkin. Um, but there's different ways to go about that. You basically want to, you can make the squash smaller by just offering it in small pieces at first um, so that it's not as big and startling. Um, or you can, introduce it at a distance uh, by putting the squash across the room. And then um, whenever your bird looks towards that squash, that's way on the other side of the room, um, you can give your bird a little treat, like a little se millet seed, something small to re reward them for looking at the new uh, squash. And then eventually you'll be rewarding them for as they move toward the squash because they'll learn that the squash is paired with the treat. So it becomes um, not scary and something really interesting and positive. Um, so it can be a process. Um, and then there are birds like Max who try to mate with um, <laughs> the pumpkin. We had a couple in the Pumpkins for Parrots contest who did that. There's a um, ringneck parrot who also was trying to mate with the pumpkin. Um, and I think with Max, you've cut it up, cut squash up into slices and he's liked it that way. Um, Absolutely. It's got a little bit better. Yeah. Um, Actually, one thing so that Max, Max usually likes is, Tico, you can see, oh, sorry, Max, I didn't mean to monkey with the phone. You can see that Tico is making great headway with his acorn squash. Tico will actually get down to the center, eat a couple of seeds, and say he's done. And it doesn't take him long. Mm -hmm. And Max actually loves the seeds. Yes, go, Max, go. Uh, so he'll actually get, you know, they'll both share the same squash. I'll, you know, they've, they've lived together for uh, 14 years. You know, I'm, I'm not too concerned about the two of them uh, sharing food or sharing toys. So I'll actually just grab the remains of the squash out of Tico's cage, give it to Max, in which case he's just all about the seeds because, hey, Tico had that. That's mine now. So it's actually a great uh, combination. <laughs> Yeah, and that's another way to introduce your birds to new objects um, is to have one bird demonstrate how to do it. So hopefully over time, Max will get used to watching Tico destroying the squash and um, they can learn by observing each other. And that's just a nice uh, type of social learning that they would naturally do. Um, and then if you do, unlike Tico and Max, if your birds tend to fight with each other or haven't lived together and got along for a long time, um, it can be best to give them each their own identical squash so that they're not, they're less likely to fight over it. Um, oh, absolutely. Was, because I, yeah. I think Tico would fight if, uh, actually Tico one morning I gave both of them an acorn squash and Max is rescue. He has some food issues. He usually likes to be fed first. It's just one way to keep peace in the household. Tico doesn't care because Tico knows the food's coming. Well, I gave mm -hmm. Max his acorn squash. I gave him food. I gave him water. I gave Tico food and water. And Tico, well, you can see he's pretty enthused about his squash. And he was watching me going, I'm not getting one. By the time I put the squash, mm -hmm. I almost lost my hand, and it was <laughs> super, super territorial behavior, which I love. Yeah. I actually thought was quite funny because it said yeah. Chico knew that squash was his, 
and he knew mm-hmm. what he wants to do with it. Mm-hmm. And it shows how much he <laughs> likes the squash. Yeah, oh. yeah, he really loves it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So uh, let's let's go a little bit beyond squash and talk about other uh, enrichment topics. Uh, for, for other people who have pet birds, and what are what are some of the ideas? I know you've got some absolutely wonderful YouTube videos out there, guys. I encourage yeah. you to follow Joanna on YouTube, watch her videos. You'll learn a lot about your pet parrots. But uh, what other ideas do you have? Well, uh, Tico, since he won the October contest, I did uh, make a natural perch, and I will be mailing that soon. Sorry, that has been taking a little while. But um, natural branches can be really great perches and um, can provide a lot of climbing opportunities. Um, You can also – so when we're talking about enrichment, I like to emphasize um, for pet owners, like, what – natural behaviors can you bring out by providing something to your bird. So with providing this squash, we've elicited this natural chewing behavior that you're seeing on the film right now. Um, If we provide Tico with some additional perches, that might elicit some nice uh, climbing, hanging, balancing behavior. Um, And then you can also have... um, not just stationary perches, but perches that uh, move, which would simulate like a branch moving in the wild because they'll be perching on branches of trees in their natural habitat. And those tree branches um, can be all different widths and they'll sway in the wind and then the birds will use their toes and leg muscles to grip and hold on to those swaying perches. And then when they take off, the um, branch will bounce a little bit. And so um, that bounce provides them with even more uh, natural exercise, really good for the legs and feet. And um, so there was a study done on zebra finches, which um, was an animal welfare study. And it found that if you had a perch in the zebra finch cage that was thinner and just attached on one side and was like a lightweight one, then um, the birds would kind of have that natural bounce when they took off and that was found to be really good for their well-being and health um so so that's like um i like to talk about how enrichment um can promote a lot of different types of physical exercise um and be really good for your birds physical health but it's also really important for their mental or psychological health and um So a great thing to do to challenge your birds um, mentally and let them perform their natural um, problem solving that they are known for um, in, you know, they're known as being really intelligent and in the wild, they'll be searching for food for like 70% of each day. So the majority of each day is spent Uh, looking for food and then, um, you know, flying around, finding the fruit, climbing to get to it, finding the nuts and seeds. So we can um, provide enrichment in the home that allows them to do that natural searching, problem-solving behavior. And one way to do that is to hide the food. So you could stick um, your bird's regular food pellets in little um, in-between parts of their toys, or you can stick them in a dish with a bunch of paper over it. So they're tearing through the paper to get to the food. Um, You can hide them all around the house. Um, Some people will drill holes along a perch and then put uh, food pellets in there. Um, And you can have food in multiple dishes and then move those around just to get them climbing and searching. Um, so we have the, uh, we have control over how we present their food in our homes and, um, food enrichment can be a really great way to get them, um, to keep them entertained during the day and get, do that problem solving. Um, and this is a type of food enrichment that you see right now with the acorn squash being a large item that has to be chewed so he can get into the middle. Um, so that's one type, but then there's the other types of food enrichment that involve like putting food into puzzle feeders um, or hiding it in different spots. Yeah, I like this 
uh, sticking some food in that bowl. And then Pico has to problem solve to get the food out of there. Yeah, um, Tico actually loves yeah. just having shredded paper in that ball. That, that's his thing with his balls. So, yeah. hey. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, shredded paper is awesome. Um, paper and cardboard are my favorite things to give to birds because they always love to tear them. And I'm going to show you the bottom of Max's cage. It just mm -hmm. got cleaned this morning, but you can see at the very bottom underneath the grate, if I, if I move the fresh stuff, you know, he just tears up newspapers like no tomorrow. He's got a fresh mm -hmm. phone book some fresh cardboard and at the front of the cage he's got some flat newspaper which he actually uses to defecate on and he actually mm -hmm. he's smart enough he doesn't chew on the paper he's defecated on but the rest of the paper he is all about and yeah you can tell he chews on a few of his perches as well great, and that, yeah. that's always great for him but uh mm -hmm. you know he's about his paper and right now he's chewing on another toy yeah, I'm trying to get a good close mm -hmm. up there. What you got, buddy? Mm -hmm. So that one's a bit of a wicker toy. Mm -hmm. And I was like him, but I'm not sure. It, you know, this one's sold for birds, so I know it is bird mm -hmm. safe. I've added all the little bits of plastic in there. It gives him something to mm -hmm. hold on to. And for mm -hmm. him, it's he's more interested in these when it's got stuff stuck into it because he can chew it apart and remove everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you've brought up some really important points about enrichment items. They should be manipulable and destructible. So he should be able to um, hold it and move it around, manipulating it, and also chewing it and destroying it. So the plastic parts make it easier to manipulate, and then the nice net of natural fiber um, is easy to chew and destroy. So you're hitting both of those um, key um, enrichment needs um with or yeah key um parts of enrichment um by having it manipulable manipulable and destructible and some bird toys for sale are more or less destructible um than others so um do you ever give them balsa wood oh absolutely they've got some, yeah. some toys i'm just going to hop into max's cage here this one's yeah. uh, oh the light's not that great uh, it's because I've got sunlight in behind, but that one is uh, is a fairly light wood perch. You'll notice I've got a few uh, sunflower seeds up here on it, which mm -hmm. is all about just giving him something to take a look at. He'll go after that mm -hmm. in, you know, occasionally. Right now, Max is all about his paper and his cardboard, and it, it's mm -hmm. nesting season for him. I mean, I mm -hmm. really notice that this time of year, he wants to nest. Mm -hmm. He thinks the uh, underside of Tico's cage would be a great place to build a nest. Mm -hmm. I happen to disagree, uh -huh. so does Tico. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just, we just encourage them to uh, work together. Tico's still working yeah. away over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hard at work, hey, buddy? Mm -hmm. But Tico will also and go I after phone books and paper and cardboard. Yeah. One thing I have on I top of his cage, if you look up, those are actually mm -hmm. to toilet paper rolls. And just looking mm -hmm. down on the cage, you can see that they're just sitting on top of the cage. Rather than putting them inside the cage, I leave them up there. And what happens is he has to work to get at them. It becomes a bit of a puzzle how to chew at them, how to pull them into his cage. And he loves being bat bird. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, that was something I did with a Timna African Grey uh, behavior client. Um, we put a bunch of toys, including some corks um, and also some cardboard rolls on top of the cage. And that problem solving by reaching through the bars on the top of the cage to get the toys, but then they kind of get knocked and moved. So it becomes a more complex problem and a bigger game to get to them. Um, yeah, that works really, really well. I love that. And I love the um, giving Tico the whole uh, phone book because phone books can be just awesome for chewing um, yeah and yeah and like I was saying chewable wood is great balsa is a type of wood that's softer than some other woods so if a bird is new to chewing on wood that can be a good one to start with um, and um, yeah and paper is soft um, fairly easy to tear apart does Max like chewing on paper or cardboard too. 
Actually, this was Max's bottom of his cage. He's the one who's nesting on the bottom of the cage. Oh, Max. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah, they both get it. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Good. More as, you know, he'll chew a little bit. He loves his phone books. That's something, there's something about the way that the paper's mm -hmm. held in that makes him be <laughs> able to fight for it. And I think that's what he really likes about it. Uh, but nice. one thing yeah, he that's... loves to do with his newspaper is he'll be eating his squash. And he's just coming over for a visit, I see. Nice. And he'll tear off a bit of paper and hold it in his foot and just scrub his face like he's using a napkin. Hmm. It, mm -hmm. He uses it to clean his beak when he's done something sticky. Okay. Wow. It, it's yeah. actually really funny watching him be a little tool user. Oh, so yeah, you have to clean with your foot, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. And it, that ends up being exactly like using a napkin, yeah, using the paper to clean the beak. That's great. Absolutely. And they definitely, both of these, uh, well, um, lots of studies have been done on tool use uh, of African gray parrots and cockatoos. Um, they can both use tools. Um, do, have you ever seen them um, pick up an object and use the object to groom themselves? I have. Tico does that sometimes. Max yeah. doesn't do it as much. Yeah. Previously, I had a lesser sulfur-crested uh, cockatoo, and she would actually pick up, pick up a toy, um, and she'd do this mm -hmm. with feathers of other birds. She'd do this with chopsticks. Mm -hmm. She'd pick it up. She'd scratch the back of her head and then pass it over top of her back, yeah. reach around with her foot. And, you know, it was just the how to scratch, how to reach it around, you know, almost like he yeah. was trying to learn how to play with a baton. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. he would also use it to pull things towards them if they were outside the cage. Yeah, Tico's awesome. Mm -hmm. Tico's more about manipulating his environment. Uh, one thing mm -hmm. he loves playing with are these plastic rings. He'll actually, okay. believe it or not, hang from them and swing from them. Mm -hmm. So I just make sure nice. that he's got a good closure so he does not have yeah. a surprise. But there's something about how unstable they are that he loves mm -hmm. to play with. And it's like, go for it, bird. They're, they're, they're baby links. They're, you know, they're built for infants to chew on. And mm -hmm. plastic, you know, kids' toys, especially stuff that's built for infants, mm -hmm. that, that type of plastic, you know, babies are chewing on. That's probably going to be the safest plastic for your birds. And a lot of toys, yeah, you can do like what Max is chewing on right now, lots of baby links on it, lots of color. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a bit of a supervised toy. I've got a few of mm -hmm. uh, these little bits in here, which are more of a building toy. He loves to get his beak in there and figure out how to pull them apart. I call it supervised because I don't want mm -hmm. him playing around with it uh, without me paying attention. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna gonna go back in and chew some more of that, buddy. Okay. Well, you can go to the top. You just can't climb around on the floor. <laughs> okay. All right. We're gonna come back over to Max. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Tico's um, climbing around the top of his cage a little bit right now, checking yeah. things out. And the way he uses those linked um, baby toys, the plastic rings, um, is what I was describing about, like the movable perches. So I've seen greys do that on Boeing perches too, where they do a lot of hanging and playing around. But um, it is that movement so that's really great. Um, and there's so many different ways to create that. And you've come up with a great way um, that works really well for Tico, which is those plastic rings. Um, yeah. One, a couple of things in Tico's cage that he really loves, this particular uh, perch, it's a swing. You can get it swinging. Yeah. Um, he's got some wood on it that he can chew. He's actually had one of these before that he chewed down so that there was, it was just the metal wire, and it would mm -hmm. slide around, uh, and there was nothing holding it, holding it on. Mm -hmm. But for him, it was all about how he could keep his balance on it. And mm -hmm. it, was, yeah. it was fun to watch. He also loves his bells and swinging from them. He'll swing from his ball. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I mean, he's, he's the bat birdie. That's yeah. awesome. I love that behavior. That's a really nice natural behavior that shows high welfare. So he's happy. And um, yeah, sometimes people ask, well, what is a good parrot behavior? Like, what's a good thing for them to be doing? Hanging upside down is a great thing for them to be doing. I love seeing that because that, yeah, it means they're having fun. Um, and it's, it's good for their muscles too, to get that exercise. Um, I, when I was doing my study randomly, the, so I was at a, um, 
parrot sanctuary called Project Perry, and it was in their African gray aviary. And a um, staff member put a plastic Easter egg in there because it was Easter time. Um, and one of the grays figured out how to stand on top of the plastic Easter egg and balance on it. And that became like her favorite game. And then she taught her mate how to do that. And um, they took turns balancing on top of this little egg this little plastic ball type thing um so balancing can be the plastic <laughs> eggs um there we go mm -hmm. this one here yep. you can hear it rattles i put a few toys in this is once again a supervised toy because it is a fairly light plastic yeah. but uh, yeah. tico knows how to break into it find what's inside uh max likes the shaking sound mm -hmm. he'll sometimes just shake it for fun, mm -hmm. but that's one of the foot toys that I have around just sort of for some enrichment. Mm -hmm. And it, it's sometimes the simple things that they love. I really like hitting the baby section and seeing what they have. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody told me, now this is back when Tico was really, really young, and Tico right now is checking out that egg. <laughs> here. Uh, that baby toys were one of the best, and mm -hmm. there's certainly a lot of interaction, a lot of color, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff happening with them. So, you know, right now he's just trying to problem solve how to get inside mm -hmm. the egg and figure out what's yeah. inside today. Hey, what's in there, buddy? Yeah, Chico's never been a fan of the phone, so you know, yeah. he, tends, he tends to look at it a little bit suspiciously. Max is all about the phone. But when Tico gets yeah. busy, he's not as concerned with it. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Yeah, that's very nice. And I like how you use the top of the cage as a play space for him. That's really yeah. great. Actually, um, if I back yeah. up a little bit, you'll see that there is a yeah. play gym sitting on top. That's actually off yeah. of a smaller travel cage that I'll use when they travel. Or mm -hmm. uh, a lot of you know that there's also an Amazon that stays with me a good part of the year. When the Amazon's here, this is actually the top of the Amazon's cage. And I, you know, it goes on top of the Amazon's cage at that point. But why would I leave it sitting downstairs gathering dust when it gives right. an enrichment uh, toy for Tico? You know, he loves it, so why not? And this one seems a lot better. This cage does have the mounts here, and it does have a branch that goes on top. But this one, it's triangular. There's that tall thing there you can hang things on. Mm -hmm. He prefers it. So I let him tell me what he wants. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's all about yeah, figuring out what they want um, by watching their behavior. Um, and um, I wanted to mention, in my study, I was really looking at um, digging behavior. So I saw that the African greys, because they had a natural like soil or it did, they didn't have any cement at the bottom of the aviary. It was all just natural dirt. Um, and the yep. greys spent a lot of time digging holes. Um, and I've also, so, and so um, digging holes is a behavior that they did to, you know, uh, keep themselves entertained. They seemed to really enjoy digging holes and they'd spend a lot of time doing it on the ground. Um, and then I added a tray full of mulch, um, and it was pine bark mulch, and pine is parrot safe. Um, so it was, hadn't been treated with any chemicals. It was all you know natural pine bark mulch in a deep dish, and I found that the grays would dig in there. Um, and then I repeated this at a cockatoo sanctuary and gave the cockatoos deep dishes of mulch, and the cockatoos dug um, in the mulch trays too, um, because both cockatoos and African greys in the wild will dig to get to the roots of like grass roots and different um, plant roots that they eat. Um, but it can also be a nesting behavior. So, you know, if Max is being sort of aggressive around nesting areas, you may want to be um, careful about how you do this. Um, but the deep dish full of pine bark mulch is a way to allow them to express that natural digging behavior. So that's like a new type of enrichment that people can try.